Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's math channel and I'm now answering question number 9 from the January 2015 C12 International A-Level at Excel uh, exam paper. And this is also question number 10 in my own mix of P1 papers that I made for students to help them practice P1. Um, and this is a question uh, number 10, I think in the June 2016 P1 paper that I mixed up together. And this question here is all about radian measure and trigonometry. It says in figure 3, the points A and B are the centers of circles C1 and C2 respectively. Okay, um, the circle C1 has a radius of 10 centimeters and C2 has a radius of 5 centimeters. The circles intersect at X and Y as shown in the figure and it says given that the distances between the centers of the two circles is 12 centimeters we have to then calculate the size of the acute angle XAB all right so let's take this diagram and put the information in it from here so you've got 10 centimeters as the the radius of this big circle and 5 centimeters the radius of the small circle and the distance between the centers of the circles is 12 centimeters. And we've got to find the angle XAB. That angle over there, let's call that angle X. X, the, X radians. It's going to not in degrees, in radians. They want it in radians. Okay, so we have here a classic case of using the cosine rule. We have three sides in a triangle. We want to find an angle. So the cosine rule will probably be the quickest way of doing this, although there might be other ways of solving the problem. I think that's the easiest way of dealing with it. And the cosine rule, the formula, which is, I think, given to you in your formula book, is a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine a. Now, if I'm trying to find an angle, and I know all three sides, then I would prefer to use this formula with cosine a as a subject, in which case you'll have b squared plus c squared minus a squared over 2bc. Now, the important thing is in the formula, to know how it is applied. Now, when you're trying to find an angle and you know all three sides, then the side opposite the angle must be the A in our formula. So here we'll have cosine of the angle X, which we've called it, is equal to, we have the two sides which are not opposite the angle, 10 squared plus 12 squared. They can be either which way, it doesn't matter, but this must be minus five squared. Okay, the, the five must be, in the place of the a in the formula for us to get the angle in that place which is x over 2 times 10 times 12 2 times bc so that the only place this appears this this side appears is in this position here in the formula 10 squared plus 12 squared minus 5 squared over 2 times 10 times 12 and then we can take our calculator and work out the value of the angle okay so the calculator must be in radian mode which it is if it wasn't you'd press shift and then menu and then angle unit and then you'd press two for radians because they said calculate the angle giving you answer in radians to three significant figures now i'm trying to find the angle so i'm going to write x equals i'll have the inverse cosine of all of this so i'll take this i'll press shift and cosine and put this in a fraction bar 10 squared plus 12 squared minus 5 squared over 2 times 10 times 12. Okay, close that bracket there and you're going to get your angle in radians 0 0.42144 0 0.42144 continues on. They want this to three significant figures so I can say x is equal to 0. 4 to 1 radians okay so that's that's the answer to this question that that means therefore the angle um, xab is equal to 0 0.421 radians okay so that's the answer to part a part b states uh, as asking us to find the area of the major sector of the circle c1 shown shaded in figure three so we want to find the area of this shaded sector here the major sector, okay? And we know that the area of a circle, sorry, the area of a sector of a circle 
when you're measuring the angle in radians is a half r squared theta where theta is this, the angle that the sector subtends okay so that is the area of a uh, sector of a circle when measured in radians now some of you might be wondering where does this come from uh, most of us in IGCSE were used to area equals theta over 360 times pi r squared. The area of a sector was given like that. But that's when the angle is measured in degrees. And we know that 360 degrees is 2 pi radians. So when you measure in radians, the, th the 360 becomes 2 pi. And then the pi's cancel. And you're left with pi over 2 times r squared, which is a half r squared theta. So that's where the formula comes from. But this can only be used when the angle is measured in radians. All right, so we need to find the area of the shaded part. And our theta here is going to be this angle, which you know makes that sector, which is, this is our theta. That's the theta I have to use. I know the radius is 10. So I know r is equal to 10. So I need to find what theta is. Now, theta... If you think about it, these two triangles that make up this kite are congruent triangles. Okay, A kite is made up of um, a pair of congruent triangles. If you draw the diagonal, the long diagonal cuts the kite into two congruent triangles. Okay, That's important for us to know the properties of some of the special quadrilaterals that we learned in earlier years. There's no chapter in the P1 book which goes through this. It's assumed that you know a lot of these properties of kites and parallelograms and rhombuses and squares and rectangles and some of the angle properties, the angle um, properties of circles and such and these kind of things. Um, it's assumed that th those are known by you. So you have to remember these properties. So in a kite, you have basically the diagonal, this long diagonal cuts the kite into two congruent triangles. Okay, so what I'm trying to say is that this angle here we know Okay, this is angle X, and this angle here, as these two triangles are, are congruent, is also X. So this whole angle here is 2X. So you've got theta is equal to 360 in degrees, which is 2 pi radians, minus 2 times our angle X. So theta equals 2 pi minus 2 times 4.221. All right, 2 times 0 0.421. Okay, this angle here, that's going to be our theta. So the area is going to be a half times r squared, r is 10, so it's r squared, times 2 pi minus 2 times 0 0.421. Now, I'm going to use this in this more accurate form, so I get my answer in an accurate form, and then give my answer, and I'm going to give it to 3SF, because it doesn't mention anything, so you should normally round to 3SF um, if there's nothing mentioned. So I'm going to, um, this is the last answer that's in my calculator. This is already stored as the last answer in my calculator. Now, in case I need it again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to store this, press store, and then I'm going to press this button A. That's now my, the, the answer in the place A in my memory. I have A, B, C, D, E. In case I need it again later, and I've got it in its exact form. So now I'm going to put this in the formula, a half. Okay, so I'm going to use a half. Then I'm going to have times 10 squared. Whoops, the 10 has to be above there, so it's a half. And then times 10 squared, which is 100. And then times, I'm going to put 2 pi. 2 times pi, so I can just write it as 2 pi, minus 2 times, now I can either put answer, because that was my last answer in the calculator. Or I could recall what I put for A. I'll just leave it as answer. That's easier to do. All right, and that will give me the area of this sector, which is 272.015. 272.015. And this is centimeters squared. So therefore, the area to 3SF is 272 centimeters squared. That's the area of the major sector of C1 as shown shaded in the diagram. So that's the answer to part B of this question. Okay, now for part C, it says find the area of the kite AYBX, this whole kite here. Now, as I mentioned earlier, a kite is made up of two congruent triangles. So if I can find the area of one of the triangles, for example, ABX, so we can say the area of the kite 
is equal to two times the area of the triangle AXB. So if I can find the area of one of those triangles and multiply it by two, I can therefore find the area of the whole kite because they're made, the diagonal, the long diagonal, cuts this into two congruent triangles. They're exactly the same shape and size. So the area of one of them, if I double it, I'll get the area of the whole kite. Okay, so now um, I need to find the area of AXB. Now I know there's a formula for the area of a triangle, which is, makes this easy if you don't have a um, perpendicular height, which is a half AB sine C means you have two sides and the angle between them. And we have exactly that. We have these two sides and the angle between them. So I can find the area of this triangle AXB quite easily. So this is going to be two times a half times 10 times 12. Those are the two sides that make the angle times the sine of the angle between them, which is 0 0.421. Okay, now this I've already stored in my calculator. So I can, what I can do now is I can just do two times a half, they cancel out, right? So I'm left now with 10 times 12 times the sine. Now I've already stored the answer, 0 0.421 is the exact form as A, so I'll press recall. So shift and still gives you recall and it shows you this. Then I'm gonna press A. Okay, so I've now got the sine of the angle and I'm in radian mode, so that should give me the area of the kite, which is 49.089 centimeters squared, which we can round to 3SF, so 49.1 centimeters squared. It doesn't tell us what to round to. In that case, we round to 3SF for, you know, most values. Okay, so there we have the answer to part C. And that is the end of this question, which is question 9 from this C12 paper and also question 10 from my paper that I made for June 2015 of P1 practice. Thank you for watching and see you soon.